From the heartland of America to every nation on earth, this is Jack Van Empey Presents The Truth in News and Commentary. Here now are Drs. Jack and Rexella Van Empey. And welcome to Jack Van Impey Presents. There is so much that we would love to share with you today. I think it would take a month for us to do a program every single day to give everything that's on our hearts. But we have some things today that are all important to your life. And we'll point out how that comes together. But first of all, oh my, Shimon Perez. Remember him? He was one of the Israeli presidents. Well, Former Israeli president dies at age 93. My, oh, my. I'm really going to ask Jack about him because he was very influential in what happened in the Middle East. Secondly, the earthquakes that will end time. Are you kidding? That's quite a headline. Earthquakes ending time? Well, we show you some pictures, and you'll think maybe it really happened. My. And then... What's happening now is annihilation in Aleppo. Oh, my heart breaks as I read some of the things that are going on in that area. Well, the world leaders attended the funeral in Jerusalem of one of the last Israeli presidents present at the new nation's birth in 1948. He was there when Israel became a nation. My, oh, my. Take a look, please, at this first headline. Shimon Perez, former Israeli president, dies age 93. Now, he was twice uh, Israel's prime minister and once the president. Going on, Hamas calls for day of rage during Perez's funeral. Well, they didn't like him very much. Well, those are the Muslim criminals, yes. Hamas and Hezbollah. Yes, and I'm going to ask Jack about that in just a moment here. But the, the establishment of the wonderful land of Israel once again in 1948, he was really partially responsible for that, wasn't oh, he, Jack? Oh, definitely, Rexella. Ladies and gentlemen, I said this a few weeks ago, and I'm a kid with a new toy, because <laughs> I found out what the sign is concerning Christ's return, and it's about to happen. Now, we have four weeks we're going to try to deal with this subject, the prophecies of Jesus, four weeks. And I'll tell you, the wonderful thing about it is, we can't run out of time now because if we go too far, we can say the rest next week. So don't miss the four weeks for an entire study on the prophecies of Jesus. Now you find those in Matthew 24, Mark 13, Luke 17 and 21 in the Gospel of John. And then of course some in the epistles. But I'll give you all these signs later. Here's the secret. Jesus said, when you see all these signs, you know my coming is near, even at the door. No one has lived to see all of them until our generation. And there was a reason for it. Guys have been preaching for years about the coming of Christ. We've missed the main point. Matthew 24, 32. Learn a parable of the fig tree. When his branch is yet tender and putteth forth leaves, you know that summer is nigh. So likewise, when you see all these things and the fig tree blossoming, that's it. Oh, oh man. <laughs> Who's the fig tree? Joel 1, 7. Hosea 9, 10. Israel. 70 AD, the Romans came into that country and took the Jews away. And for 2,000 years, there was no Israel until Shimon Perez came in. And it was the first leader and first president. 
1948. 19 years later, 1967, the Jews captured Jerusalem. Now, get it, because this is what makes this message so important on the signs of Jesus. He said, you'll see all of them when Israel is a nation and has Jerusalem in their hands. It's here in our generation. We are the generation that's going home and soon. Now, I'll be saying that other weeks, but not the full context. But I want you to know every sign you're going to hear the next four weeks is important because Jesus is going to come when Israel is a nation and in Jerusalem. It wasn't there for 2,000 years, but it's here today. Hallelujah. Okay. Now, why is that so important? Because when Russia marches, we'll get into that later, against Israel and they're in charge of Jerusalem. The attack is on Israel and Jerusalem. What? Ezekiel 38 and 39. This is the war of Gog, Magog, Russia, China, and of course, North Korea and Iran. Those are the four. And can you believe that the Wall Street Journal just said atoms are going to be falling soon in America? Wow, you that talk about prophecy. Some of these guys know more than some of our preachers. But the thrilling thing is when it happens, we will be evacuated, raptures gone, hallelujah. How do I know that this war called Armageddon is the one that the Christians escape? Because they have invaded Israel to get Jerusalem in their full possession. Now, I want you Christians who are prepared to get ready to shout there in your home because you're going to get goose pimples on your duck bumps. <laughs> Ezekiel 38 verses 8, 14, 16, 17, 18, 19. Six times. Chapter 39 verses 2, 4, 7, 9, 11, 12, 17, 22, 23, 25, 27, 29, 18 times. They're there. And now all the signs Jesus gave said, you'll know when this is going to happen because when Israel and Jerusalem is in their land, then I'm coming. It's right at the door. We are the rapture generation. Oh, Jack, that's so exciting. You know, Prince, we're starting this program off on a very positive note. That is so wonderful that they are now the wonderful land of Israel. I'm sorry that this next uh, prophecy is not as good as that one, but it had to happen before the coming of the Lord. Let's take the fact that there will be many, many false prophets, now religions, that say that Jesus is not the Son of God. The Korean anathemizes, curses, and damns anyone daring to say that Jesus is the Son of God. When they do, it is guaranteed they will go to hell. Islam! Oh, my, oh, my. That breaks my heart. Well, they are false prophets. And there you go. Mohammed Kabani. This is what he has to say. We see that Makti will lead a world revolution that will institute a new world order based on the religion of Islam. You know, that's what they're really trying for. They want to do that. A world order. The Makti will offer the religion of Islam to the Jews and Christians. Well, those are their two main objects. If they accept it, they'll be spared. Otherwise, they will be killed, and Prophet Jesus will be the executioner under Mahdi. Oh, that's my Lord, Jesus Christ. And Islam will be victorious over all religions. Now, you know, Jack, we have zeroed in on the Islamic religion, but they're just one of many that uh, puts Jesus down. There are about 1,600 religions out there that put Jesus down, right? I got a book of 1,600 denominations and religions and false cults in America. The majority of them hate Jesus, and the one that hates Jesus the most is Islam. These 135 billboards they had up last year is a lie. 
If you believe that Jesus is a member of the Trinity or that Jesus is the Son of God, you'll be in hell forever. And yet there are hundreds of verses in this book that says Jesus is the way and he's the only way. John 14, 6 and Acts 4, 12. Neither is there salvation in any other. There's no other name under heaven given among men whereby we must be saved. And praise the Lord, that name is Jesus. Jesus, only Jesus. Now, if I say something against the Quran or I say what I'm saying now, that's a death threat. I'm under four of them already. God's protecting me, and I don't care what happens. If you can talk about my Jesus that way, I can talk about Islam that way. Isn't that fair? You also preach that Christ did not die on the cross. He was not raised from the dead. And now when he comes back, he's a murderer. He kills every Jew and Christian and non-Muslim. God forgive all of you. And when Hillary gets on there and says, we welcome all of you and we love you Muslims, she better start reading her Bible and her history books and see what they really believe. We are in trouble. U.S. News and World Report and the Wall Street Journal recently had that article. The atom bombs are soon coming from poor nations. We'll get to that a little later in the program. Get ready. Prepare to meet that God, Amos 412. Jesus is about to return. And oh, we're playing church. Give me a nice little sermon, a little sermonette. 90% of the American Christian ministers said we will not preach anything that frightens people. Then you've got to throw half of and three quarters of the Bible away. Preach the word, be instant in season, out of season. Reprove, rebuke, exhort with all long suffering and doctrine. For the time will come when they will not endure sound doctrine, but they'll heap to themselves teachers who have itching ears. They want their ears tickled. Oh, isn't this a wonderful little sermon today? God, help us to stick to this word. Preachers, get right with God. Fall on your faces this week. Say, Lord, I'm going to preach all of your book, and I'm going to start with the prophecies of Jesus. If you can't preach that, get out of the ministry. He's our Jesus. He's our Savior, and he's the only way to heaven. The other 1,600 have to come to Jesus if they would. Well, you know what, Jack? Uh, there, I've met some wonderful, sweet, Muslim people, but they're not following the Quran. In fact, I've even talked to some Muslim people. They said, I've never read the Quran. You know, they aren't going in that direction because certainly the, that does do away with who Jesus really is. Well, we're going to go on with four signs that Jesus gave in this next packet of signs. The first one being the earthquakes that will end time. Oh my goodness, yes, Jesus talked about that. Earthquake leaves at least 37 dead in central Italy. Take a look at it. Oh, that breaks my heart. That's Italy, oh. And then Oklahoma, right here in uh, the United States, jolted by record earthquake. It was felt by seven states. Oh my, Hurricane Newton hits Mexico and threatens the U.S. Well, here we go again. Florida's Gulf Coast braces for Hurricane Hermine. Oh, I just, my heart goes out to them. Hermine heads up the Atlantic coast. Oh, well, we all know that it did. And here we see it. Haiti is going to fall deeper into misery. Now, that's Hurricane Matthew. Crippled so many nations. Humanitarian crisis there. 900 dead with this hurricane. Matthew packs people into shelters and hotels. Well, now that's right here in the United States in Fort Lauderdale. They didn't get out in time. Hurricane could leave economic mess. Do you know how much that could go up to? From 25 billion to as much as 70 billion dollars. Then Matthew moves on, but dangers linger. Well, yes, the dangers of floods and all. Here you see it, floods leave trail of death and havoc. Well, the 11 were killed there. Spanish wildfires force evacuations. Now that's Valencia. Oh my, look at that. The wildfires. And then another one here before I come to Jack. Many California fire victims will come home to nothing. 
nothing left. How would you feel, friends, if you had nothing left? Well, we dealt with four different things. Earthquakes, hurricanes, floods, wildfires. Did Jesus really talk about all of those things? In fact, you're probably saying, oh, we've always had earthquakes. We've always had hurricanes and so forth, but not like this. And then simultaneous with the other signs that Jesus said. Jesus said when you see all of these things simultaneously. Jack, my heart is when really broken. When you see all these things, Rexella, when there is an Israel in control of Jerusalem, yes. we are the ones. Right. Get ready. Jesus is about to come. Yes. So it's, are those four things in the Bible that I just mentioned? Okay. Are you listening carefully? I'll go slowly here. Matthew 24, verses 3 to 14. The disciples came to Jesus and said, Tell us, when shall these things be, and what shall be the sign of your coming? The sign, Israel and Jerusalem. Amen. Now here are the prophecies Rexella just discussed and they come from the lips of Jesus. Let's go back to Matthew 24. Many shall come in my name saying, I am Christ and shall deceive many. And you shall hear of wars and rumors of wars. See that you be not deceived, for these things must come, but the end is not yet. For nations shall rise against nation and kingdom against kingdom, and there shall be famines and pestilences and earthquakes and divers places. All these are the beginning of sorrows. Then shall many be offended, and shall betray one another, and shall hate one another. Many false prophets shall rise, and shall deceive many. And the love of many shall wax cold. But he that shall endure unto the end shall be saved. And this gospel of the kingdom shall be preached to all the world. And then Jesus will come. Now there's a little more in Luke 21, 25. Jesus also added, there shall be signs in the sun, in the moon, in the stars and on the earth distress of nations with perplexity, men's hearts failing them for fear, for looking after those things which shall come to pass on the earth, for the powers of the heavens shall be shaken, and then shall they see the Son of Man, Jesus, coming in all his glory. Amen. Hey, prepare to meet that God. It's near. Oh, you know, with everything going on today, it is so wonderful to have a positive promise. Yeah. It's a promise. Jesus said, don't let your heart be troubled. Well, one thing, I wish I didn't have to report this one, but it is so very important. And the Bible makes a big issue of this, about what's happening in the line of wars around the world. U.S. Cardinal says Islam wants to govern the world. Well, they're going to have to do a, a lot of uh, possessing of other nations to do that. Will upcoming fight in Syria usher in Armageddon? My, Armageddon? What's happening now is annihilation. Airstrikes pound rebels in Aleppo. And then Russia's U.S. missile defense killing hypersonic rockets arriving soon. Now pay attention to some of these nations, friends. There's Russia, Moscow moves missiles toward Poland. Now you know Kerry, you know our Secretary of State urged war crimes probe on Russia. He said this could be a crime. And then going on, Chinese rank U.S. as top threat. Hey, there's another country, Russia, China. Hey, here's another country. North Korea threatens preemptive nuclear strike amid U.S. South Korea, there's another country that they're going against drills. And then here's that country, North Korea says nukes are defense against who? U.S. blackmail? Are you kidding? And then the Pentagon, we're closer than ever to lasers that can stop Iranian North Korean missiles. Well, there is a couple of countries that hate us. Netanyahu, extremist Islamists, ISIS and Iran using technology to take the world backward. He's right. U.S. State Department report names Iran as top sponsor of global terror. Iran. Now, do you <laughs> notice something? There are the, the four countries that we were mentioning. Russia, China, North Korea, Iran. Wall Street they, Journal. Uh, yes, we talked about them last week. And it's all happening now. Can you imagine? They're going together 
to try and take over the world. Jack, you're not surprised by this, are you? Jesus said, when you see all these signs in connection with their being in Israel and in control of Jerusalem, that's it. Every sign fits into it. Now, what about this one? Can you imagine when the Wall Street Journal warns Americans and says, get ready, the atoms are going to be hitting in the cities of America soon. The United States Congress has just warned us that we are soon going to see an atomic war. Ladies and gentlemen, we are in trouble. But let me give you some good news. If you're a Christian, you're not going to be here. Why? Revelation 3.10, I'll keep you from ek, the Greek word, out of the hour of testing that comes into the whole world. Amen. How? Revelation 4.1, come up hither in the rapture. He comes and we're taken home in the twinkling of an eye. 1 Corinthians 15.52. Now, get ready. Who are these countries? This is from the Wall Street Journal. They said it and backed up what I've preached for 60 years. First all over Russia, and that's Ezekiel 38 and 39. Son of man, set thy face against Gog, the land of Magog, the Russian prince of Moscow and Tobolsk. Why? Because they lead it. Then there's China, Revelation 16, 12. They come from the east across the river Euphrates. It has dried up. Why? Oh, because Tagarma, Ezekiel 38, verse 6, is Turkey, and they have the Alatolia project so they can dry up the Euphrates River in a matter of a couple days. Wow! Everything is here, every sign. Now listen carefully. There's more. There is North Korea. That's part of the Oriental group that comes, Revelation 16, 12. And they are going to try to smash all America. That little dictator wants to kill every one of us if he can. And then there is Iran, the worst terrorist organization in the Muslim world. And that, of course, is Persia there in Ezekiel 38 verse 5 now listen carefully if you're saved and you're living for the Lord you're going to be snatched away before the greatest battle in history called Armageddon Revelation 16 16 and here it is recorded in Revelation chapter 9 verses 14 to 18 loose the four demons in the great river Euphrates to slay a third part of mankind and the number of the army was 200,000, 200 million and by these three was the third part of men killed fire, smoke, brimstone, atomic warfare and you find that in Psalm 97, 3, Isaiah 66, 50, Ezekiel 20, 47, Joel 2 verses 3 and 30, Zephaniah 1, 18, Malachi 4, 1 and so on. Jesus is about to come. It could only happen when Israel was the nation and they were in charge of Jerusalem. He's coming. Oh, he is coming soon, and I've asked this question so many times. Are you ready for that coming? Because when Jesus comes, we need to be ready. You know how to be ready? To have him in your heart, saying, Oh, Lord, thank you for being my Savior. Son of God, thank you for dying on the cross for me, and I accept you as my Savior. Will you pray this prayer with Jack? Accepting Jesus as your Savior, cleansed of all sin. Jack. There's only one way. Whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord Jesus Christ shall be saved. Will you do it right now? Jesus, thank you for the cross. Thank you for your death. Thank you for your resurrection. Thank you for sitting at the throne in heaven now, about to come back. And I'm asking you to save me. I want to be with you, Jesus. Oh, my heart's been moved as I heard this sermon about the future. Lord Jesus, I want to be ready. Come into my heart today. Save me in your holy name, precious Jesus. Amen. Amen. If you pray that prayer, look, there's my address on the screen right now. You write me and let me know. I want to send you this wonderful little book, of First Steps in a New Direction. Hey, are you on drugs? How good it is that you've been forgiven. If you're on alcohol, forgiven. Fornication, forgiven. How good it is to be ready to meet the Lord. So let me know. I'll send you this little book, First Steps in a New Direction. And now, 
I just want you to know that everything we've been talking about today, as I said before, is here in our wonderful offer of the week, the Jack Van Impey Prophecy Bible. And here is our announcer to tell you how you can receive it. Don't put it off. Christmas is around the corner. Chuck? Thank you, Rexella. My friend, to order your Jack Van Impey Prophecy Bible, have your credit card ready and call toll-free 24 hours a day, 1-800-JVI-7777. To order by mail in the U.S., send your donation of $59.95 to Jack Van Appy Ministries, Box 704, Troy, Michigan 48007. In Canada, send your donation of $59.95 to Jack Van Appy Ministries of Canada, Box 1717, Postal Station A, Windsor, Ontario, NINA6Y1. Now back to Rexella. Thank you so much, Chuck. And don't put it off. Make the call or write right away. One of the greatest gifts that you could give at any time of the year. And now, friends, I want to leave you with this wonderful, wonderful thought. I like to leave you with a good thought every week. The more you read the Bible, the more you'll love the author how good it is that God wrote the Bible. We'll look forward to being in your home again next week. And until then, always remember, God cares for you. So do we so very much. Bye-bye. <laughs>